Omega online course. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Dr. Saad for uh, his efforts for organization and logistics. Uh, uh, as Dr. Saad said, this is a unique uh, presentation, a little bit different from the routine previous lectures. Uh, I think all the attendees are uh, know about that. It is one of the uh, most well-known exams in the field of anesthesia, which is the fellowship of the College of Anesthesiologists in Ireland. I believe this presentation is very necessary for those who are planning and preparing uh, to have this exam, but uh, they may not have the access to the all necessary information. So I guess we are all lucky today uh, to go through this uh, by our guest speaker, Dr. Youssef Awad. Uh, Dr. Youssef is a member and a fellow of the College of Anesthesiologists in Ireland. Currently, he is a registrar of anesthesia and intensive care in Our Lady of Lord's Hospital in Droda, Ireland. Uh, so, Dr. Youssef, please, uh, you may start your presentation and the questions will be collected and discussed at the end. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Saad, for your uh, kind words. Uh, I'm Youssef, I'm uh, an anesthesia registrar in Our Lady of Lords. Uh, in Ireland, uh, and um, thanks for the all attend attendees today. Um, today's lecture is an introduction to the FCI or the Fellowship of the College of Anesthesiologists of Ireland. Uh, we will uh, highlight uh, the new online format. Um, for those who is uh, planning or uh, preparing for the uh, fellowship, uh, they will get a great uh, uh, amount of information about the exam, and for those who is not who are not um, uh, applying for the exam, uh, may get uh, uh, some information about uh, uh, how to uh, uh, answer and how to prepare for an in, an online anesthesiology uh, exam in general. Uh, so we we'll start right away. All right. So uh, by the end of this lecture, we will know um, why we apply for the uh, Fellowship of the College of Anesthesiologists of Ireland, or uh, FCEI. Uh, we will have an idea about the proctor system, uh, uh, and we will know uh, the new structure of the online fellowship, uh, part one and part two, and how to prepare for the exam, sources for the exam, and how to answer online. So why we apply for the uh, fellowship? Uh, if you are a trainee or a, are a, a, you are on the training uh, program in the uh, anesthesia in, uh, in, in Ireland, uh, it's, it's a mandatory part that you have to pass the fellowship, of course, after passing the membership. So the fellowship is the, uh, the, uh, the complimentary exam after the membership. Uh, and if you are not, uh, uh, you, are, or you are applying for specialist registration uh, to be a specialist in Ireland through the non-training scheme, uh, you also uh, have to uh, pass the fellowship exam and or uh, uh, an equivalent exam uh, you will find on the uh, specialist uh, uh, registration uh, terms, uh, such as F FRCA Part 2, uh, American Board of Anesthesiology. But in general, uh, if, you are, uh, if you are working in Ireland, uh, you are more likely that uh, you'll have to pass this exam in order to uh, uh, apply for the specialist registration. Uh, that's, that's one reason. The other reason is the academic reason. Uh, I, I believe most of us um, subscribe for one or maybe um, dozens of uh, uh, scientific journals to keep themselves updated with the new, with the new guidelines and the new uh, studies. Uh, uh, during your study for the uh, fellowship, you will be exposed, of course, if you have the good sources, you will be exposed to the uh, most uh, uh, common uh, guidelines and uh, 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 updates about uh, anesthesia, intensive care, and other uh, areas on, in, in anesthesia. 
So it will uh, automatically make you uh, have a, a, a general idea about uh, the new uh, the new uh, uh, studies and uh, and uh, sources uh, that you, you you may need uh, you may uh, you may uh, use during your uh, your career. Uh, from clinical point of view, uh, it helps you uh, to in your in your uh, work place. Uh, uh, for for example, uh, having a, an ASA three or four uh, patient coming to an emergency, multi morbidities uh, help you to organize your your thinking and and conduct a safe and uh, uh, well well, well uh, planned uh, anesthesia for for this patient. Also, if you have a, a, a complex case in ICU, uh, gives you an idea uh, about how to deal and how to manage uh, uh, such patients. Uh, gives you uh, um, a good, uh, good uh, clinical judgment uh, abilities uh, by the end of, uh, of, of this, uh, of your study. Uh, from teaching point of view, not only uh, I'm not here not talking only about uh, preparing lectures, but teaching your uh, junior doctors, uh, and instead of only uh, uh, talking about uh, your own experience, uh, uh, you will give your uh, your junior you, you, you will talk your junior with an evidence based uh, medicine, uh, an updated uh, information. Uh, uh, which is reliable, and and I think it's uh, mandatory for all of us if we are in a position that we are teach. Uh, it's our duty that uh, we should have a, 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 a an evidence based science uh, while giving an information uh, to a, any of our junior colleagues. Uh, from personal point of view. Um, it's healthy. It's healthy to study uh, and to read. Uh, it's healthy for your brain, and it's also uh, good to have a challenging in your life to pass such a tough exam, uh, and also add lots of points, as uh, uh, Dr. Sarwat mentioned. Uh, it's a well-known exam all over the world, and uh, putting uh, in your CV such uh, such uh, a certificate is a, is a very good value. So, what is the proctor exam? That's the, 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 the very briefly. That's the system the college are using at the moment uh, since the uh, the pandemic uh, made uh, made the uh, the. Uh, the, made it impossible for the candidates to come to uh, uh, examination centers all over the world, including uh, Ireland. Uh, so the the College of Anesthesiologists had uh, uh, had start, had used this uh, system to allow people to uh, have their uh, examination from their homes uh, without uh, the need to travel. To, uh, to, uh, to 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 uh, uh, to uh, to answer the questions. Uh, so very briefly, proctor means that someone is monitoring uh, you and uh, uh, preventing the candidates from cheating. Uh, the good the good news that you cannot see the proctor while answering the the the, the, the questions. But he can see you, and he's monitoring you. Also, not to panic. Uh, if you just keep focused on the uh, on the exam, keep keep your eyes focused on the computer and the, the, and your keyboard. Uh, you you will not be uh, in trouble. And we're going to discuss uh, later on uh, what is allowed and what's not allowed in uh, in examination. Um, for you, for more information about how the proctor exam works, you can visit the proctorexam.com, and you will find a few videos uh, very simply explaining how the proctor uh, uh, exam uh, works. So, 
what are the parts of the uh, fellowship? Uh, uh, there are two main parts, uh, uh, the written exam and the clinical exam. Each exam uh, is held in only one day, uh, usually a very long day. Uh, the written part uh, uh, is composed of two uh, papers, uh, single best answer paper and short answer question papers. The uh, SOE or a structure oral examination or the clinical part uh, is composed of three uh, parts. A clinical case, or sometimes we call, we call it a long case, uh, CRQs or uh, constructed respond questions and VSACs, which is very short answer question, paper one, and CRQs and VSACs, paper two. That's the new structure of the uh, uh, fellowship exam. Now, the scoring system of the exam uh, is graded between one and four. One is outright fail two is borderline fail. So one or two means fail, three pass, four excellent. In order to pass the uh, written examination, you have to pass in, in the two papers, the single best answer and short answer question with at least a score of three in each. In order to pass the, uh, the fellowship clinical exam, you have to pass in at least two uh, papers with a score of three and the, the third uh, paper should not be below two. Now for the, uh, for the written part, single best answer, which usually is the second paper. Uh, uh, the single best answer is a 90 questions uh, are now separated into two papers. Each paper is one and a half hours. So in total, there are uh, 90 questions to be answered in three hours with a break in between. Uh, uh, as you can see on the right, the, the table, these are the number of questions uh, for each part. Uh, for example, uh, uh, anesthesia for neurosurgery, neuroanalgia, uh, neuro, uh, neuro um, radiology, uh, neurocritical care are six. Uh, for cardiac anesthesia, four. For vascular surgery, two. Uh, the cut score for uh, for a short for single best answer paper is determined by angle of referencing. Um, so what's ag angle of referencing? Agno uh, uh, angle of referencing is a, a, a group of examiners are, are setting a, a cut-off uh, mark for, for uh, a specific question based on how difficult they think the question is. Uh, above this cut-off uh, mark, the candidate a uh, pass below this below this mark below this cut off mark the candidate is fail uh, why it is important to know that because sometimes we have a very difficult question uh, in the exam and we feel very upset uh, that we couldn't answer it because it was very difficult and uh, it was unfamiliar usually questions like this uh, had a low cut off uh, mark uh, because the examiners uh, usually knows uh, how difficult the question is and they expect uh, how good the, uh, the, the, the candidate will answer this question. The, uh, the other part of the written exam, which is the short answer question, and in my opinion, that's the most difficult part of, uh, of all the parts of the fellowship in general. These are 10 sh short answer questions. It's, uh, it's usually uh, um, a case, and there are about five or six uh, subparts uh, of, of the question, uh, for, for all of which must be answered. Uh, if you fail to answer a whole question, uh, your whole paper will be, uh, uh, will be, will be uh, uh, considered a failure. Uh, again, uh, these 10 questions are uh, separated into two papers, each paper five, a question, and each paper to be answered in one hour and 40 minutes with a break in between.
Again, the pass mark for every, for every question will be calculated by the Angoff method. Again, if you have a difficult question, try to answer it uh, the, uh, with the Angoff method. If the, diff if, the, if the question is difficult, the passing mark will be low and you, you still have a chance uh, to pass the question. Uh, on the right side of the screen, you will find the uh, um, uh, the number of the question corresponding to each part of Anathesia. There are two notes, uh, two things to be noted here. Uh, you will find that you you have to have a question about pain. You have to have a question about pediatrics. You have to have a question uh, uh, on obstetrics question on intensive care medicine, and the, 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 the last question of the five uh, is either cardiothoracic or neurosurgery or neurocritical care. So just to be noted, uh, do you have a guaranteed question about each of these uh, parts? Uh, so you have to, to, to have a good knowledge of uh, the parts I just mentioned. Uh, the other note is that you will find uh, on the lower part of the table the, that advanced science like anatomy, pharmacology, physiology, and bio biochemistry, physics uh, are a whole question. Well, that actually doesn't happen. Uh, the, the advanced science is not a solo question or is not a separate question. It's usually integrated uh, with other questions. Uh, we will, uh, for example, uh, a question about Parkinson's disease. Uh, the first question may be uh, like this. Uh, discuss the pharmacology of, uh, of uh, anti-Parkinson uh, anti uh, uh, anti disease. So that's a pharmacology question. And the question after that is usually anesthetic, like what's the anesthetic implication for a patient, uh, or a Parkinson patient uh, going under anesthesia? Another example, uh, a question about uh, 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 a dural puncture, uh, accidental dural puncture in uh, obstetric. The question may start with, describe the anatomy of the cerebrospinal fluid. So this is a, a basic science or advanced science, uh, which is, again, is integrated into all, most of the questions. Uh, so you will not find a whole question about uh, basic science, but you will find it as a part of other questions. Uh, in total, there will be uh, the, the marks on the uh, on the science will be uh, as one whole question. Now, after uh, successfully uh, passing the uh, written examination, you will have uh, another day. Uh, to complete uh, the fellowship is the clinical day. Uh, in the clinical day, as we mentioned, we have a clinical case uh, as a first paper. Usually before the, uh, the online, uh, because, because all the examination now for, uh, in the college uh, is online, the clinical case with oral, uh, an examiner or two examiners with a, a computer screen uh, are discussing, giving you information about the case and discussing uh, um, uh, the case with you, uh, giving you a question uh, and uh, waiting for your response and uh, giving you another question. Uh, a so a series of question uh, uh, and a series of answers, uh, corresponding answers, uh, kind of interaction. Um, now it's it's all changed. It's now online, so you will find the clinical case uh, is on written format. Uh, first thing, uh, you will find a, a, a case information that an anesthesiologist normally would have, like age of the patient, gender, um, complaint, past medical history, uh, medica medication history, and then short clinical presentation, uh, vignette. And after that, a series of questions about the case, and including uh, included in the uh, on the questions 
uh, illustrations for geology, like X-ray. Um, um, for uh, on my examination, it was a CT scan, CT brain. Uh, 12 lead ECGs, pulmonary function tests, and so. Uh, so uh, there was no big change between the uh, uh, previous uh, oral examination and the written. Uh, you will find uh, the sequence of the question same as the uh, previous oral uh, version, uh, except it's, it's, it's online and you have to type it instead of uh, 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 saying it. The other parts, that's, that's the major change, usually, uh, which is a CRQs and VSACs, usually it was two, uh, two uh, more stations after the uh, long case, uh, SOE or structure oral examination, part one and part two. Uh, they are all uh, con uh, transformed into a written format of CRQs and VSACs questions. Uh, uh, they are merged into 10 questions uh, to be answered and they are separated into two uh, papers, each paper to be answered in one hour and a half with a break in between. The first paper will include clinical anesthesia and pain management and the second paper will include intensive care medicine and advanced science. So what are the CRQs or constructed uh, uh, response questions. They are open-ended short answer questions with precise answer templates. Uh, uh, for example, uh, mention uh, the uh, complication of, uh, of tap lock. Uh, mention the management of, uh, um, uh, for example, uh, malignant hyperparexia or anaphylaxis. Uh, these are questions very similar to a uh, short answer question uh, on, the, uh, uh, on the written part. And the, the main difference that you will find a real world artifacts means, again, you will find graphs like x-rays, you will find images, uh, and uh, uh, ECGs to, uh, to interpret. And again, you will find five, five uh, about five plus at least, so at least five subsections uh, with with each um, with each uh, uh, case. The other type of question is VSACs or very short answer question. So from the name, it's very short answer question needs a specific uh, answer. For example, usually few words like what what is the most likely the diagnosis and um, maybe like why why do you, why do you think this uh, that is the uh, diagnosis or what's the, what's the reason behind your answer? So usually uh, these questions uh, needs a few words um, doesn't need any uh, more than that. Um, so this table summarizes the uh, new uh, FCI examination uh, parts. Uh, as we mentioned, the written exam is single best answer and short answer question. Single best answer is 90 questions to be answered in three hours, two papers uh, uh, and a break in between. Uh, short answer question, uh, 10 questions uh, to be divided into five questions each paper with a break in between. That's the first day uh, or the written day, the clinical day will have a clinical case, which takes one hour. And uh, the, uh, the other two papers uh, it takes one hour and a half each, which is CRQs and VSACs. Each paper takes one hour and a half, as we, as we mentioned. And all these papers are marked with the ANGOV uh, marking system. Uh, so now we finished the first part of, uh, uh, of our uh, lecture today. And we are going to move to the second part. So we had an idea now about the exam. Now we, we, we will have a look how to prepare and how to uh, answer in the exam. So if you are traveling for a holiday, which I, I know it's, 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 it's too far from now during this pandemic, but imagine that you are traveling to have a holiday 
somewhere. So you have to prepare yourself. How do you prepare yourself? First, you gather information about the place you're going. Uh, uh, depending on where you're going, you're going to pick what you're going to take. So for example, if you're going to a hot place, so you will have light clothes. If you go into a cold place, you're going to have a heavy clothes. Um, and uh, maybe you will introduce it for how the people are speaking there and maybe uh, how, what are the uh, the culture uh, in the in the in the, uh, in the country you are going to visit uh, how much money you're going to take and uh, uh, how, where are you going to stay uh, which flight you're going to take and finally you're going to book your flight and book your hotel and travel same thing for the exam uh, so, first of all, determine your resources. How to determine your resources? So, uh, first, you have to know the structure of, of the exam, and we already discussed this. Uh, so, it's very good. For example, if you if you if you are having a structure exam with with most most of the exam are very short answer question. Um, it's not reasonable to uh, have like two or three textbook. And um, it's very good, of course, textbooks are very, very good, but it won't be enough to pass the exam because the structure of the exam requires um, something different, uh, some other sort uh, of study uh, should be uh, done. So first you have to pick a resources that matches the type of the questions uh, you're going to face in the exam so you won't be surprised uh, on the day of the exam with this type of question even if you have the form uh, the information is going to it's going to be very very hard for you uh, to get information in, in su such uh, uh, short period of time you have to have a long-term target uh, for example if your exam after three or four or five months you have to have a long-term target uh, for say you have by the end of this five months you have to finish a specific number of books studying a specific number of books or websites uh, and you have to have a, a specific amount of information this has to be set before you start preparing for your exam short-term target usually days or weeks uh, for example uh, you said this week, uh, yeah, I have to finish the pediatrics and intensive care. So at, by the end of this week, you have to have uh, this target done. Make it reasonable, all right? So um, you can say I, I will go for this exam with only one source. Uh, you are most li more likely to fail. And you, you, you can say that I'm going to study about 12 books and go for the exam, of course, if, if that's your ability, but be reasonable. Um, match your, uh, your ability. You are the best one to, to know uh, your limits. Uh, match your, your limits, your abilities to the resources. Uh, don't make the resources is too low or too much. And finally, book the exam. You book on the exam from the uh, the website of the uh, of the college, which, which is anesthesia.ie. Uh, there is you will find the opening date and closing date uh, for the uh, booking. You can't book before or after uh, this uh, these times. Second uh, thing is organize your time. How to organize your time? Um, we all uh, find difficult uh, difficulties to, in studying um, during uh, during work with the family responsibilities, uh, but a lot of people uh, have done this, and you have to do this as well. Uh, these these are my personal experience, um, and I'm just sharing it with you, uh, and I find it very useful uh, for everybody to follow. First of all, trying at work, we're talking about work, at work trying to save your energy, how to save your energy. Uh, I'm talking again about my own experience. Uh, in order to save your energy, try not to put yourself in a stressful situation, which 
how, which can be avoided by being early. Like I come early, prepare my medication, I know my, uh, my, my patient, so I won't be in trouble and I, I may finish my list more quicker. Uh, be organized so you will not miss anything and you will not be in a stressful uh, situation. So first of all, save your, your energy at work by being organized and being early. Uh, stress at work. So uh, how to avoid stress at work? Uh, don't go to work. Uh, so for the, that's a joke. <laughs> so uh, uh, how, to, how to avoid stress at work? Uh, we all uh, have a stress at work. So first you have to recognize that you, you, you are in a stressful or, or you're feeling a stress. Uh, you usually feel tired. You feel um, irritable. You may feel sleepy. You may feel um, have loss of appetite or maybe on the uh, contrary, um, eating too much. Uh, so now you have to realize first that you are stressed. Uh, second thing, how to deal with it. On the actual time, try, try to have a break. If you feel stressed, try to have a break uh, uh, if, if you're allowed to. If you are working um, too many hours, ask for a break. If nobody uh, give you a break, try to ask for a break. Uh, talk to a close friend of yours. Talk to one of your family. Uh, talk to uh, even your mentor uh, about st any stressful uh, issue uh, at your work. Uh, if you're having a hobby um, uh, or some musical instrument you play on, keep on doing this. Uh, it's very important. And the last thing, how to avoid the stress, um, as, as we mentioned before, be organized, be early, and um, try to have a break, even if you don't feel tired. Like, say, if you're working about three or four hours and you don't feel tired, you have to give yourself a break and uh, eat well. Um, the other, other, other thing is uh, that you have to have a dedicated hours at home. Um, you have a plan, as we mentioned, and you have a target. You have to reach this target. And uh, to, in order to reach this target, you have to, uh, uh, to push yourself uh, through a particular time every day to uh, finish what you have to do to, to finish. Uh, so for, say, like a few hours, like uh, everyone is different. So some people can uh, study more, in, more than others, like... Some people study the same amount in two hours and the others are in four hours. It's, it's again, you know your limits more than anybody, but uh, you, have, you have to dedicate some hours uh, every day. And of course, don't forget your family. It's very healthy that you stay with them for, for you and for, for, for them. And again, uh, don't forget to uh, not to cut off your hobbies if you're working out or uh, doing a, a any kind of hobbies or maybe maybe watching tv but don't cut everything uh, suddenly for the sake of the uh, study leave days again this is a personal preferences i i, I want to commend uh, specific days uh, but usually the days before the exam uh, are the best uh, to be taken as uh, days off uh, but for it's, it's not necessarily i know Myself and the written examination, I haven't had uh, the week before the exam off. I was working because we were uh, show, we have shortage at work. So it's not necessarily, and don't think that if you don't have days off before the exam, you will not pass the exam. That's not true. And uh, my advice is avoid long off work days. Like don't work, don't take like a month off. Uh, this will fire back at you. Uh, I know a uh, few people had a long days off and they failed because what happened is that by long time in, at home in, in locking yourself in your room, you get uh, bored, uh, you're not going to study as before and you give, a, you give yourself a, a full sensation that you have loads of time and you're losing time and you're losing interest by the end and um, if you're losing interest, you will, you, it's unlikely for you to pass the exam. Now, um, the exam is online. Is it better? All right. If you have a bad handwriting and if you are fast 
uh, keyboard typing. And uh, if you get very anxious in oral examination, uh, this exam is for you. Um, if you are uh, slow in typing, you don't have to worry. We're going to discuss this on the next uh, slides, how to uh, improve your typing. Make sure that you have a suitable laptop. Um, uh, there is a few cases, uh, the, uh, the computer just frozen. Uh, during the exam, and it's very embarrassing, it's very, very distressing, a uh, very distressful situation if you're in the middle of the exam and your computer is frozen. So try to make sure that your computer um, uh, is, is updated, not a 20-year-old uh, laptop or something. Uh, try to get uh, a, a, a computer that is uh, reliable. Decent Wi-Fi connection. If you have a problem with your, with your company, try to change it quickly before the exam, uh, a good idea to restart the Wi-Fi before uh, be, uh, in, the, in the morning of the uh, exam. Um, make sure that you have a suitable room with adequate lightning in order to see what you're typing. Uh, water, coffee, juice are all allowed, uh, even snacks, there's no problem with that. But what's not allowed is toilet breaks. Again, if you, if you remember the proctor uh, system, you cannot leave the camera. The camera, you are, you, you are being watched. You will get a, a message once the, uh, just a few minutes before the exam that everything is recorded. From this point, anything you do is recorded. If you leave the screen, uh, you will not have an any excuse, even for a toilet, uh, because they will consider you that, the, that it's a uh, uh, cheating. So toilet breaks are not allowed and of course uh, make sure that there is no mobile phones in the room. Always have your ID handy, uh, your driving li license, your passport and uh, the mock examination. Uh, what's the mock examination? It's a trial examination. Um, takes about um, one hour or something. Uh, it's exactly the same uh, similar same uh, form of the of the exam, but of course uh, less question. Uh, the good news that these questions are not uh, uh, added to to your real exam, so it's just a trial how uh, how you deal with the uh, with the uh, online examination. Um, my personal advice is. Try to, to set your goal on the study on this exam. So I say you, this mock exam is usually uh, a week before the exam. So try to set your, uh, your target to finish your study at this day. Uh, what's the reason for that? Um, first, you will finish your, your, your study earlier. So you have a whole week just to, uh, to, to chill and have just a light uh, revision of what you studied. And the second thing is that if you're doing good in the mock exam, this will give you much more confidence. Uh, you will go for the exam with uh, very good, in a good, very, in, in, a, in a very good mood, uh, and you are more likely to pass the exam. Uh, on the contrary, if you are going for the mock exam, saying that this, this exam is not counted, you're not studying well, you'll go for the exam and you will not answer well, and you will feel yourself, okay, say, I'm, I didn't answer well exam, I, I, I think that I'm not gonna answer well in the real exam as well, and you will get yourself frustrated and uh, you, you, you may fail because of this. So my, my, my um, advice, Go for the mock exam with a full preparation. Now, this question I've been asked too many times, how to improve my writing? I'm a slow typing. Uh, of course, it's uh, everyone has his, his own speed. The speed is determined by word per minute. Uh, for myself, like I, I tested myself too many times, it's, it's always uh, around 34 word per minute. Uh, I set a number of 30 word per, word per minute, and this is my personal uh, preference. It's a bit fast, but uh, I, I, I think that's, that's, that should be your target. 
If you are uh, a few numbers below this, you are okay. If you are above this, that's perfect. So how can you do this? If you are if you are like 17 word per minute or something, you're two way behind, and you must you 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 have to uh, improve your speed on typing. Otherwise, you're going to be in a big trouble. So there are too many uh, free online uh, teaching websites. Uh, I've seen I, I've used two of them, but there are dozens of them. Uh, you have a speedtypingonline.com and you have typing.com. Uh, if you kept, kept on practicing until reaching this target, uh, you probably will have no problem in typing. How long will it take? Well, it depends um, on how much time you're practicing. Uh, I, I know it will add to the uh, stress you're having because you're already studying for the, uh, for the exam. And at the same time, you're uh, practicing, but to, to, there is no way you have to do it. Uh, at the moment, we don't know when we are going back to papers. Nobody knows how, how long this pandemic will take. So um, you have to do it. You have to practice. How you, can, how you can practice? Every day. How much? How, how often? Every day. Um, another thing is, uh, and I did this myself, every night, have a question, just pick a random question, uh, a real question from any of your resources, and just use the word, the Microsoft Word, and see how speed you are. Make your target a 70. So for the short answer question, uh, uh, you will find that each question will take 20 minutes. If, you, if, if, if each question takes 20 minutes, you will be fine. But I, in the, here, I'd say 17 minutes because some question may take more than 20 minutes and some question may need to be reviewed again or revised again, or uh, you, you don't have to uh, push, push yourself uh, in a situation that uh, you, you don't have enough time to answer a question. So the target is 17 minutes or less is my, uh, my personal preference to answer a question. Uh, so every night, as I said, try to practice on one uh, random question. Now, how to answer? Online exam made it easy. So if you again, if you have a bad handwriting, you don't have to worry. So the computer always have a good handwriting. Uh, the other good advantage is that you have, it's very easy to jump between the questions. I tried to get a, um, the format uh, from the website for, from the, uh, of, the, uh, of the examination, but I actually couldn't find. But I'll try to, uh, to, to explain to you how the exam looked like very simply. In your screen, you will find three parts, a right column and a middle and a left, okay? On your left hand, you will find uh, a, a, the question numbers, or what we call it, um, uh, the, uh, the titles. For example, you will find question number one, and then below it, A, B, C, D, and then question number two, A, B, C, D. Imagine that I am answering uh, question C on uh, or uh, on the question five, and I want to go uh, to question A or one A. Very, very easily, you just scroll your mouse and click on it. Once you click on on the uh, sub part, you will find on the middle table, you will find the case. For example, uh, a five-year-old uh, Down syndrome patient had a uh, foreign body. On the right side, you will find the question relevant to the case, and the answers will be like uh, white boxes below each question. Very simple. Uh, you don't have to, like previously, we have 10, uh, 10 papers, and in order to jump between uh, the papers, it was very hard and takes lots of time. So it's actually the, the online examination saves lots of time. 
And also you don't have to write your name and your college number on each paper as we used to do before. Uh, that's, that, that's something. The other thing is that before answering any question, stop and have a look on the marks beside each question. Each question, at the end of each question, you will find marks. Why you have to stop? Because some question may have only two marks or only even one mark. Sometimes you get excited and you want to answer say five or six lines so you will by this you will lose very valuable time the time is very valuable in this exam so it's better not to so you have to uh, stop and see if this question only takes two two marks that means it needs only a few words or maybe one line two lines that's all if the question have eight marks that means that you need to have more lines in your answer uh if it's hard to deal with it flag it what is that some question um, you may find it's very difficult or you can't recall the answers you can flag it just click right click on the uh, on the on the question and there will be a flag sign beside this question so it's very easy for you again on the left side again you can find at the end of the exam if you finished and you still have time you have you will see how many flags you have or how many flagged question you have. You can go back to it if you're, you didn't answer, try to answer it. Or if you still need something to, to add to it, you can add to it and then you remove the flag means that this question is done. Um, bulleted points, that's the recommended, uh, that's my, my, my personal experience again, that's, that's the recommended way of answering bulleted points. Uh, if you just write uh, just texts uh, without uh, headli headlines, uh, you will make it hard for yourself and for the examiner. Uh, so make it easy for yourself and for examiner. Use bullet, uh, like you can do shift and eight in your keyboard, you will find a star. That's, 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 that's me by the bullet, shift and eight or maybe uh, you do just um, the dash or the minus this is like a bullet or this is like a headline because in your exam you can do a pulled or you can do underlines um, and also you can copy and paste in the exam just to just to mention that because uh, if you try it it won't work i'll give you an example on the next slide this is a perfect example on how to answer. So for this question, for example, give the specific problems of providing anesthesia for children with uh, autistic spectrum disease and outline the possible solution. Again, you will find here seven marks. That means this question uh, needs a good amount of answers. Uh, so make sure that you have a good, uh, you have covered everything. You see here the, the, the answers, you will find it's bulleted points, headline, headlines, and then explanation in separate lines we don't try the answers as <clears throat> as a textbook we don't do that uh, as again as i said make it easier for yourself and make it easier for the examiner now to the most important part what are the sources okay again uh, the sources I picked is a mixture of the recommendation of uh, the College of Anesthesiologists on their website and my personal uh, preferences. Uh, it's up to you to choose whichever source you like. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll start with the short answer question. I find the, uh, the, the number one source is the master pass for Elizabeth Coomber and it's updated, it's 2019. Uh, these are uh, um, uh, past papers from the UK, uh, answered by uh, a group of uh, experts, and uh, you will find you will not only get the knowledge, but you will also uh, it all uh, the book also teaches you how to uh, organize your thinking, how to organize your answers. Uh, so I highly recommend uh, this book uh, to be included in your resources. Um, another book, and is recommended by the uh, College of Anesthesiologists, which is short answer question, 
by Shorthouse. Uh, usually one or two questions comes from this book. This is my, again, my own experience. And there is a, a website, it's not mentioned on the, uh, the college website. It's called uh, School of Northern Ireland. You have the link here. This is a huge question bank and almost have most of the questions you might see. The main problem is that these questions are answered with no references. These questions are answered by a group of doctors in uh, UK, uh, non-consultant or maybe consultants, but there is no reference. Uh, some questions are well answered uh, in a bulleted point, and some questions are answered in a poorly way, in like textbook, uh, textbooks way, which is very, very hard to do. And some questions might have uh, incorrect information or a, a out of date information. Um, I know some people who passed, they got this website and they were answering the question, they were finding the question from uh, the journals themselves, but this will take lots of time. If you can do it, that will be great. But again, uh, it's a very good website, but you have to be careful. Uh, because from the answers because the answers has no references. Uh, the other uh, website, and it's recommended by the College of Anesthesiologists, uh, it's the British uh, BGA, British Journal of Anesthesia uh, Education. Um, each paper usually have one or two new, brand new question never came before. Uh, if you have a look on the British Journal of Anesthesia Education, uh, you, you may find this question in the previous months before the exam. Uh, so it's worth have a look uh, on the uh, new uh, versions of this journal before going for the exam. Uh, for the single best answer question, I find the, the book of the final FRCA 300 by Karim El Bogdadli. It's very, very, uh, very helpful. It's 300 questions, single best answer, will good uh, explained, and it may help you uh, also with the uh, short answer questions. Uh, my other resource, this is my personal experience, is the Get Through uh, Final FRCA uh, by Dizzy Khan. And uh, the other uh, source is the uh, BMJ or the oneexamination.com. Um, it's you subscribe, I don't remember for how much, uh, to be honest, it's between 30 to $60 or, or um, sterling bound, I don't remember. Uh, it's a huge question bank and could be uh, a one source uh, if you're going for the, uh, say, uh, for, for the exam and uh, you don't have time to have more than one source. It's about, it could be about 2000 question uh, and that, that should be fine. For the uh, for the for the short answer question, the clinical case or the long case, I highly recommend the book of the final FRCA structure oral examination uh, by Bobby uh, Krishnashiti. Uh, the clinical or long case you will find uh, on this uh, book is very very handy and uh, I highly recommend this book. And the other book, and is recommended by the College of Anesthesiologists, is the Clinical Anesthesia Viva book by Barker. And uh, there is another book recommended by the college, which is Structural Examination uh, by Mindonka. Uh, I, I actually did not, uh, I, I didn't have a chance to, uh, to read the, the last book. I only uh, uh, got the two, uh, first books for the structure oral examination uh, a, a, you uh, you will find as we, as we mentioned again this is no longer a, a clinical examination it's just crqs and vsacs question uh, since these questions are very very similar to the short answer question and in order not to distract yourself after passing the written examination, if you uh, had your uh, master pass book of Elizabeth Coomber, you can include it again on your uh, clinical examination. It was, it's, it's going to be uh, very helpful. 
and uh, again short answer question for short house so these two books uh, we already mentioned in the uh, uh, on the written examination again you will uh, you uh, you will find it helpful in the uh, CRQ's uh, question because it's very similar again the third uh, reference I recommend is the final FRCA the structural examination by Bobby Krishna Shetty. Uh, again, this book has both long cases and SOE 1 and 2, which includes uh, the clinical uh, part and uh, the basic science. Uh, so uh, you, will, you will have to, uh, or it's better for you to have the whole book, include the long cases and uh, the short cases and the basic science all together. Uh, on only this book. Uh, there is another book, I haven't had a chance to, uh, to read from it all, but it, I found it very, very good. It's, it's a CRQ's question, it's by Ashraf uh, Akuji. Uh, it's, it's an updated book and it has exactly the same format of the question uh, of the uh, clinical uh, papers. Uh, I, I, again, I didn't uh, get uh, to read all of it, but I had uh, exposed to some of the questions there, and it's a very, very good book, and uh, I recommend this book for your uh, CRQ uh, papers. Uh, so what are the best way to study? Of course, pick uh, something quiet uh, with a good light source, so you will not get tired or get headache. Um, uh, Give your give give some space for your or some some time with your family or your friends. Don't stay on your room for a long time. Try to have a good walk or maybe uh, running. And my personal experience is to have your study part by part. Like for example, if I'm going to have pediatrics, I will study and I have like three sources. I start the, the, uh, the, the, the first source, I finish the pediatrics on the first source, and then I move to the second source and I study the, the pediatrics. The reason is that you will find overlapping of questions. So you find a question may be repetitive. Uh, if you find a repeated question, try to uh, unite your source. So if you have the same question on the second source, pick only one source to get the question from. Uh, if you're studying the, uh, the answers, because the answers are different uh, between the books, if you're studying the answer for the same question in a different way, you will be very distracted and you may end up uh, being confused in the exam. So again, this is, this is what I think uh, will help you to save lots of time and uh, prevent uh, distraction. Self-testing, we mentioned this before, uh, you're not only testing your knowledge, but you're testing your uh, typing speed. Every night, try to uh, give yourself um, a sample question, answer it, uh, typing and test your speed and test your knowledge. So you test your speed and your knowledge at the same time. Teaching groups. Uh, teaching groups, uh, of course, during the pandemic, it's very hard to meet, but we still can do a Zoom meeting, we can do a Skype meeting, we can do even a Messenger or any of the social uh, networking uh, groups, or maybe one-to-one. -one. And this is what I did. Uh, I used to study with uh, one of my colleagues over the phone. Uh, I prepare uh, a few questions and he prepares a few questions and we discuss it together. We will uh, we um, test our knowledge and uh, we uh, give ourselves uh, some hints about how to answer the question. And it's very good uh, psychologically you feel uh, you feel satisfied. You're talking to a friend and at the same time you're studying and uh, usually the question you discussed you never uh, it's very hard for you to forget. Uh, so in summary, I'm um, sorry if I took it took too long, but I tried to cover everything I know uh, for my colleagues. So in summary, you have to know your exam, make a plan, organize your time, and avoid the stress. This will uh, save a lot of time, and practice, practice, practice. Um, thank you so much, and uh, I'm ready for any question. Well, thank you very much for this informative and well-organized presentation.
uh, really I like that you add your personal experience on how to manage and organize the uh, time uh, and also I guess you talk a little bit about the stress management that we can face at work and how to manage this stress really thank you very much uh, I have okay. got questions I have got questions, but uh, I guess most of them are answered during the lecture. The first one was, uh, it is available online. Now it is online format, as you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, you have clearly also uh, presented the resources for the preparation. Already this was a question about that. Uh, there was question also about uh, the, there is basic science or advanced science in uh, comparison to the clinical anesthesia. Uh, I guess it's also there is questions on the advanced uh, science regarding that. That's true. Um, there is uh, one question about uh, uh, the uh, if CAI is it uh, all or none or pass or fail exam? I mean, if you pass uh, the written, you will be after that uh, uh, start the SOE or you will do the post tests, then well. you got the final result. Well, I, I guess Dr. Saad knows on the uh, uh, previously, uh, if you fail the, uh, the clinical exam, you have to go uh, for the written exam. Am I correct, Dr. Saad? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. yeah. But now it is uh, no. valid for three times. Yeah, so I, I think it's six times the uh, the uh, six times the written exam, like you have six trials for the, uh, for the written exam. Uh, after the sixth time, you have to go again to, for the membership. You have to pass the membership from the whole beginning. And uh, sixth time also for the structural exam. But if you fail the, uh, okay. the, 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 the clinic... Yeah, go ahead, yeah, thank you. If, if you fail the clinical examination, you don't have to uh, repeat the written examination. That was in the past, yeah. but thankfully it's okay. not anymore. <laughs> uh, it is six times or three years. And uh, if we will stay three years and they did not uh, attempt the uh, clinical one, uh, the written exam is gone. So you have to do it again. Uh, okay. I, I, uh, I don't have any more questions. Uh, I no, there is one know. more actually no. here. Uh, who is allowed to do the exam? Okay, so you will find on the website, uh, again, if you, uh, the uh, uh, eligible criteria for the examination. Uh, so you have to pass the membership of the College of Anesthesiologists of Ireland or equivalent. Equivalent, uh, the, most, the most common and the most popular one is the uh, European Diploma of Anesthesiologists. Uh, there is another uh, equivalence you will find on the website. Of course, I don't remember them all, uh, but as far as I remember, the the uh, I think the fellowship of uh, of uh, Australia and American board, uh, you will find it all on the website. But again, the most common or the most popular is the membership of the College of Anesthesiology itself, which is uh, the preferred one, and the European diploma. Uh, and your red diploma is part one, part two as well. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. the whole one. Uh, there is one question, Dr. Yusuf, if you don't mind, about the cost and what are the opportunities after doing the FCAI test? Okay, so the cost you again, uh, the cost is you will find it on the uh, website. Uh, uh, it's about 700 uh, euros uh, each exam. Uh, it's refundable if you are working in, in Ireland. Uh, I don't know, and it depends. It, it, it could be refundable in your country. It depends on where you're working, but it's uh, it's for in, for for people who are working in the HSE uh, or the Ministry of Health in Ireland. It's refundable uh, completely. Uh, what was the other question? What are the benefits? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, what are the opportunities after doing the FCAI test? Okay, so the uh, FCI certificate, you uh, by by it, you can it's it's uh, it's a higher qualification. You can uh, register with the Irish Medical Council to practice in Ireland, as well as the membership. Uh, and for UK, you can register uh, in the uh, GMC uh, in UK with the fellowship, but you can't register with the membership. So if you're uh, if you're working in Ireland and you have uh, the membership, 
so and you, you you seek to go to the UK, you may go for the fellowship in order to adjust uh, in UK. Uh, the other values of this examination, uh, I'm talking about Ireland because this is where I work. Uh, is that uh, there are some positions like uh, something called, we call a senior registrar or a third on call. Uh, it's preferred that you have the fellowship before going this. If you don't have a fellowship and you uh, uh, hold this position, a senior registrar or a third on call, uh, this the third on call or this uh, period will not be counted as a part of your training because you were not holding the fellowship uh, before that. Other specialities, uh, you may need uh, to have the fellowship to be counted, like cardiothoracic, uh, neuroanesthesia, pediatrics. Uh, if you don't have the fellowship before that, before holding this uh, modules, it may not be counted. Uh, uh, about other countries, I might not have the whole information uh, how how. Uh, how uh, this uh, certificate will be uh, added, but it depends. A check with your uh, uh, corresponding uh, medical council uh, to see uh, what is the equivalent to this uh, certificate in your country. Uh, thanks a lot, Dr. Youssef. Uh, there is one question, uh, please, uh, uh, about the uh, CRQs and uh, VSAQs. Uh, yeah. So this is type of uh, single best answer or short answer, answer questions. You will put a short uh, answer after that. So as I, I already explained this, a very short answer question usually needs a few words, like what is the diagnosis? Uh, the CRQ's question is very similar to short answer questions, uh, which is the uh, open-ended question or constructed uh, uh, response question. It, it's very, very similar to short answer question. Uh, so if you're, if you're studying the uh, short answer question, it will help you a lot to, uh, to answer this kind of questions. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't get uh, more questions. Dr. Sadi, you got any more questions? Um, just a, a little note I would like to add here. Uh, this lecture is not sponsored by anyone. Uh, this lecture is a, a present from Dr. Jawad to the MEGA online course and our colleagues back home and everywhere in the world. Uh, this lecture is not paid by the college or any other body. This lecture is just a voluntary work by Dr. Jawad and uh, our guest moderator, Dr. Sarwat Habib. Uh, I would like to thank uh, all of them on your behalf, and uh, we definitely will find some uh, other lecture to give you note about the MCI and how to make it easy. Uh, on Mega Online course, and uh, myself and my colleagues and all my friends, we are trying to do our best to benefit our colleagues in anesthesiology, how to improve their practice, how to improve their qualification, how to get them better training, how to get this uh, to, at the end of the day, to get a better patient care. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Yosef, and thank you very much, Dr. Zarat Habib. Do you want to say anything? Thank you very much. Thank you very much.